night to the book of Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible. Gen Everybody say Genesis. Genesis. I love that. Genesis chapter 22. I want to talk about something tonight that God is going to really believe bore into your spirit. The Lord loves baby Christians, but he doesn't expect, expect them to stay babies. Pull that off on me, Jerry. He expects them to grow up. When you have a newborn baby, it's beautiful to see. A little pink bundle of joy. But you want that baby to grow in the fullness and the stature that, it, that, that it's capable of doing. I have preached in approximately, Jerry, I guess in the last four and a half years, about 320-something churches, maybe a little more than that. And I find a lot of Christians have been saved for years still hadn't grown out their pampers. They're still messing up their diapers. They're still fighting amongst each other like a bunch of kids. They get mad because somebody gets, gets a chance to sing a solo and they don't. And it, it looks like a nursery. God, give that to me. I don't like, I wish, I mean, just say detrimental things about each other. It's not like kids in a nursery fighting over things. Say, so are you saved? Yes. Turn with me to Genesis 22. The title of my sermon, we'll get to it in a minute as we read, is Because You've Done This. I want to talk tonight, I'll put it in one simple word. I want to talk tonight about dedication. What does it mean to dedicate? What does it mean to be in the covenant of God? What that means to God and what that means to you? Genesis 22, we're going to be talking about Abraham. We talked about him this morning. Let's talk about it again. Genesis 22, let's go to verse 2. God's talking to Abraham and he says, he says this. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. You notice God told him that he loved this boy, and God asked him for the most precious thing he had. Whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Didn't even tell him, wait, what mountain is going to happen? Just told him to take his boy that he loves, that he waited 25 years for, that was a total, complete miracle to have that baby boy, Isaac. That the covenant God said through Isaac will all the nations be blessed. God asked him one of the most powerful questions ever. He said, take your son. You notice he said this. Read verse 2 again. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. Well, he did have other sons. One, one was named Ishmael. But in God's eyes, Isaac was a representation of Jesus Christ. So he called him his only son. Wonder why God said he's only son. What did God do about Jesus? He said, Jesus is my only son. So let's read verse 2 again. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac and his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. You notice that he rose up early to obey God. He did not fight and struggle. And yet all the covenant was in that boy. You notice he had to get up early? Why did he have to get up early? One thing, he was going to, wanted to obey God immediately, and another thing, Sarah was still sleeping. You notice it didn't say he told Sarah? Sarah would have strung him up right there and killed that man. That's one boy she loved. You didn't touch old Isaac. She was, Isaac was a mama's boy. In fact, when he first saw his wife, first thing he did, he took his wife into his mama's tent and started crying. Maybe that's why he, Abraham rose up early to get rid of that mama boy. <laughs> he wasn't a macho man, if you want to call it as such. But boy, Isaac and Sarah were like that. And the Bible said he rose up early. Title of the sermon, because you've done this, talking about dedication. Verse 4, then on the third day, so notice he had all this time to think about killing his boy. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. 
And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. You know what he said? I and the lad will go yonder and come back. Yet God told him, You're going to burn that boy to the stake. And he asked him for something pagan. Because Abraham came out of a city where they offered up human sacrifices and he knew God was displeased with that. Yet God said, burn your son for me. I want you to listen to this. So this is confusing to Abraham. You just told me to come out of paganism. Now you're asking me to do a pagan act by offering up a human sacrifice when you appall that, when you hate that. Keep reading with me. This is what's going through this man's mind. Verse 7. Now let's go to verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went both of them together. And Isaac spoke. Now Isaac began to get a revelation. <laughs> and Isaac spake unto his Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? He could not conceive in his mind that his daddy would kill him. He knew his daddy was kind of weird. His daddy would pray all night, go off in the mountain, come back days later. Was a man close to God. God called him his friend. Yet he couldn't conceive in his mind that he was going to be the sacrifice. Notice this. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide a lamb, himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Still ain't got the idea yet. He figured it. My dad says it. Bless God, it's settled and done. Because he's God's friend. That's how Jody thinks about me. If my daddy said I can go somewhere, I don't care if my mama says I can't. If the big man daddy says it, I'm going. And I told her she has to obey her mama more just as much as she has to obey me. But sometimes she'll try to use me against her mama. Her mama said, you can't do that. She said, well, I want to tell you something, sweet mama. Daddy said I could. And he runs you around too. Then <laughs> she gets both of us in trouble. <laughs> I told her, shut her mouth. <laughs> Verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son. Now Isaac knows what's going on. <laughs> he starts throwing ropes on the boy. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. You notice Isaac didn't try to run away. If it had been me, my daddy would have put one rope on me. I, he'd have had to chase me all over that mountain. I said, you crazy, Jack. You want to burn up something? Burn yourself. This boy going home. My mama going to be bad. And if Sarah would have knew what's going on, bless God, she'd have been mad as a hornet. <laughs> How many of y'all would give your life for something like that? Don't laugh at me. You'd do the same thing. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now, for now, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah. And it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And he said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because, that's the title of my sermon, for because thou hast done this thing. And hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, that in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth, that includes America, that includes Shreveport, hallelujah, that includes wherever you live. Let's read that again. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. The title of my sermon tonight is because you have done this. You you have to realize something about Abraham. God asked him to do a pagan thing and he could not conceive how God could offer up human sacrifices. He said when he knew God told him to get out of that city because they'd done those things. But yet because he loved God so much, he, because he dedicated himself to the Lord, he didn't think it was odd that God would ask him for his most precious gift. I want to let you know the reason why he thought that. Because God had cut a covenant with Abraham and God knew without a shadow of a doubt that he could, that God knew and Abraham knew that that covenant could not be broken. 
Abraham, I mean Jesus, God himself said, I'll swear by no one greater than myself. If I break this covenant, I'll cease to be God. That's actually what God said to that man. So he made up his mind. He said, if I got to kill this boy, he said, I'll do what Jesus told me to do. But bless God, after I put the knife in him, I'll pull it out, lay my hands on him, brother, because Jehovah Jireh is my provider. I don't care what the devil said. If God wants everything I got, he can have it all. And God never once thought twice to ask for his most prized possession. And he won't think twice to ask you for everything you got. You know why? Because you have a covenant with him. And I want to let you know something, brother. You don't think twice to ask him for anything he's got. If you have a need, you don't think twice to go to that throne and ask him for it. Why? Because you all have a covenant with him. And you know who he is and he knows who you are. So really the relationship is one and the same. It's called dedication. It took dedication to get that man, to get that boy out on that wood, to stab that boy. But the Bible said, because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son. I believe Abraham, when that angel cried out and said, don't hurt that boy. I believe he took that knife, praise God. He saw that ram, he ripped that ram loose, burnt that offering, and throw that knife as far away as he could. I believe he had a Holy Ghost shot down time on there. But I want to tell you something. People, God stopped the knife that went into Isaac. It didn't touch him. But nobody he stopped the Roman spear that pierced Jesus, brother. When Jesus laid upon a cross and they drove nails in his hand and he sweat drops of blood, brother. Who did he do that for? He did it for you people here in Shreveport, Louisiana. He did it for all your sin, brother. Nobody stopped the Roman spear that jumped, busted him in the side. Jesus had to die. Isaac got delivered, but Jesus had to die. But I want to let you know he's not dead no more. Brother, he said to the right hand of the Father, make an intercession for you this day. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Because thou hast done this. He said, boy, because you've given me everything you got, they won't be able to count all the money I'm going to give you. They ain't going to be able to count. Bless God, every nation on the world is going to be blessed because you have done this. Has God told you to do something you hadn't done? Has something been greater in your eyes than the precious obedience that Jesus asked you to do? Have you dedicated yourself to the Lord to such a degree that if he asked you for anything, you'd give it, whether it be physical or spiritual? Have you stood on the word of God and believed? Because thou hast done this. Because thou hast done this. What caused that man to do that? Dedication. So point one of this sermon is dedication is essential in spiritual development for the believer. If you, you will not grow until you dedicate yourself to the Lord to such a degree that everything you possess is his and everything he possesses is yours. When you understand that in that relationship, brother, then you wouldn't think twice if God told you to sell everything you got and gave it away. And you, God wouldn't think twice if you say, God, in the name of Jesus, I want $100 million. I needed to go across this world. I need to do this. You wouldn't think twice to ask God to pay your bills. He wouldn't think twice to ask you to pay his. Why? Because you got a covenant between each other. God could pay his own bills. The only reason he put giving in the Bible was just so you could get blessed. He don't need no money. By no means. He only does it because you know what? He figured if he got the man's wallet, he got his heart. If you don't believe me, ask wives. They'll tell you. <laughs> this, notice that dedication is essential in spiritual development for the believer. St. John chapter 7, verse 17. If any man would do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. If you want to turn to St. John 7, verse 17, you can read it for yourself. It takes dedication to believe this word of God. I mean, I want you to realize something, brother. God asked that man, and his mind was thinking, this is pagan. But yet if God tells me to do it, I'll do it, and I don't care what anybody says. I know everybody thinks I'm nuts. They think I went to the extreme. They think I went off my end, but bless the Lord, as one thing. I know and I know God's voice and if God tells me to do something I'm not out here to get popularity I'm not out here to explain why I do some of the things I do I just tell people God told me to do it if they don't like it I'm sorry pick it up with God he's the one that instituted the thing see it takes dedication brother to, 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 to develop in the power and the spirit that you have there's a lot of people baby Christians they stay in pampers because they don't dedicate because see the more you grow in the Lord the more is required of you much is given to you much is required of you a lot of people don't like to grow in the Lord because they rather stay in, in a baby stage you ever seen babies at five six years old begin to regress instead of progress because they, 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 they won't talk good they rather talk baby talk because they feel they get more attention you ever seen that happen maybe with children but it kind of irritates you when your kids 
seven years old and he's still talking like a baby. You say, hey, boy, I want you to talk right. I want you to grow up. Even you want him to grow up into the fullness and stature of the man that he should be. God wants you to do that. But the only way you're going to get it done is through dedication. Notice what Jesus said. Because he done this. He gave your only son. What he was saying, Abraham, my Abraham, you done something greater than anybody in the world's ever done. You willing to give me everything you got. It took dedication to do that, people. Dedication is essential in spiritual development for the believer. You want to develop in the spirit of God? You want to get closer to God? You got to dedicate yourself more. You got to cut your TV off a little bit. Yeah. Instead of watching soap operas, you ought to be praying and listening to tapes. Amen. You don't like soap operas? No. That's all they talk about is adultery and fornication. How are you going to get anything good out of that? Harry went out with George or whoever. I don't know how it goes, but bless God. Milo, how are you ever going to get your spirit man developed when you're worried about General Hospital and Sister Luke and Brother, whatever? I don't know them people's name, but whatever. <laughs> how are you going to ever get a healing, bless God, when you're filling your spirit man with junk and malarkey? And I've been guilty of that myself. I've caught myself sometime watching television. God said, what you doing? I said, watching television. He said, well, cut it off. Talk to me. You've been hollering where I am. Well, bless God, I'm right here. Do, can I have a piece of your time? Dedication. God always want to talk to me during a football game. <laughs> or the U.S. Open, the tennis match between Lyndall and Connors. Bang! I said, good Lord, he said, talk to me. Wait a minute, God, let me see the serve first, will you? <laughs> Dedication is central for spiritual development. It takes spiritual development. See, when you dedicate yourself to the Lord, then the visions of faith come all the time, and you're not worried about what things, what's going to happen, brother. You've dedicated yourself so much to God, God is saying the same thing to you as he said about, about Abraham, because you've done this, because you've done this, because you've re released everything to me, I'm going to release everything to you. Isn't that Jesus? Why? Think about Abraham. Look, think of the thing that went through his mind. He want to kill that boy. But he said, if I got to kill him, I'll please my father. Because I know my father won't leave him dead. And he named the place Jehovah Jireh. What does it mean, people? Does anybody know? My what? My what? Your provider. Then why you come up here seeking for provisions? Why don't you seek the provider? Then the provision will come. You don't just seek for healing. Seek the healer. You get the healer on your side. The healing will be present. It's called dedication to seek the healer. It takes dedication and commitment to grow in the Lord. I think God's tired of wimpy, wampsy, pansy Christians. I think he's had it up to here with that. He's tired of adolescent Christians. Think they know everything. And they, and they got duck tails in the spirit, you know. Grease back. Think they're some Johnny Cool. Because they know something about baptism or something like that. I think he's tired of people fighting each other and biting on each other and splitting on each other. I think he's tired of prejudice in the ministry. Men don't like women preachers. That's a bunch of junk. Jesus loves them. He ordains them. I think he's tired of prejudice, prejudice between races. And good Christian people say, I love God as long as they're white. Get mad because somebody black lives next door to you. What are you going to do when you get to heaven? God's liable to put you right in the black section. I think he's tired of that junk. He's had it up to here with that. Because there's no such thing as a black section in heaven. If we're all in the same section. If you're living next door to a black man in heaven, your real estate won't go down. It'll go up. What you do if you got to heaven and God was black? You'd say, my Lord, this ain't the place I'm going to. And then black people say, I told y'all so. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. A lot of people would be disappointed. Because you've done this, Enoch walked with the Lord. So much, man, my God, you couldn't hardly talk to Enoch because he's always talking to God. Because he'd done this, God said, Enoch, come on home, man. You don't need to be on the planet Earth. Just come up here and talk to me. He said, I never did like this place. Let's go with you. And he's still there. Isn't that amazing? So how is he kept alive? <laughs> you get around God, you're going to stay alive. There ain't no death in him. You follow what I'm trying to say? Dedication. Have you dedicated yourself to the Lord? To such a degree, brother, that anything God asks you to do. And I'm not talking necessarily about money. Put that out your mind for a minute. Let's talk about some of the things. Go down to your neighbor and tell him about Jesus. Or maybe you had a Christmas dinner. 
and all your family losses are goose in the fog. You're the only Christian. And then God says, stand up and pray over all this food and rebuke the devil and bind the demons and bless the food. And you think, oh, if God only knew my mother-in-law. <laughs> he does. He does. See, my mother-in-law thinks I am a stone-crazy fanatic. Every one of her, well, not all, um, yeah, just bless God, all of them. Every one of her daughters and her son has got saved under my ministry. She said, he is infecting the whole family. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> my brother-in-law's building the church like to blow it away. She called him and said, Jules, don't get crazy. You ain't going to get like Jesse. He said, bless God, I'm getting better than Jesse. I want to get like God. He said, you need to get saved, woman. I called up and said, I told you so. But I tell you what, they spit on us, boy. Called me and my wife all kind of stupid names, which I did not particularly like. Jesus said, you make a stand for me. You dedicate yourself. I said, God, just let me hit that woman one time. I'll make her reach out to you fast, brother. He said, she'll come to the knowledge of Jesus when she sees the love of the Lord in y'all. We used to go eat crawfish. We, well, we still go eat crawfish. You know, kids and eat crawfish. Boy, they bring out the beer by the buckets full. And they all walk up to me. Hey, what happened now, preacher? How about a drink? I said, I'll tell you what, I'll take a drink of that. If you take a drink of my Holy Ghost, what do you think? Oh, no, thank you. We don't want to hear that. <laughs> I said, right, let me give you some new wine. I believe God has got to help me out. I'll, I'll take a sip of beer, bless God. I'll spit it out, but it can't spit the Holy Ghost out once it gets inside you, brother. It stays. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dedication is essential in spiritual development. I've heard people say, Brother Jesse, you're growing in the Lord. You know why? Because I've dedicated myself to him. It ain't easy preaching 51 revivals a year. It ain't easy leaving your family every week, every week, every week, every week. And your child's growing up and you don't hardly see it. That ain't easy if you're any kind of daddy. But bless the Lord, there's a world out there that needs to come to the knowledge of Jesus. And God has given me a ministry to go out forth and minister that work. Just like he gave you a ministry to pastor this church. And he gave you a ministry to tell everybody that's working for you or working with you. Bless God about Jesus Christ. Not about the assemblies of God. Not about the Methodist or the Baptist or the word, a word of faith. But Jesus, then let God explain to them where he wants them to go. He'll probably blow you away. He may send them to the Episcopalians. <laughs> because Jesus loves them. Dedication. It takes dedication in this word when people are making fun of you. They do it all the time, but I don't care. When their babies get sick, they come call me. It's all right. He said, Jesse, because you've done this. Boy, there's been times, I tell you what, brother, when I get around my family, especially my wife's family, my Lord, I didn't even want to go down there because all they're going to do is harass me. All they saw was the nightclub entertainer and the drunk and the drug man. All they could think about was what I used to take drugs and drink booze, man. How you talk about I kept people in, I drank a fifth of whiskey a day for years. As much drugs as I could get my hands on. I was an adulterer, bad. I was a nightclub entertainer. I was out all the time. I never, I, a lot of times I never see the sun, I, I never see it go down. I went to bed at 5.30 in the morning and got up at 6 that night or something like that. It was already down. I was a night person. I was a terrible individual. That's what they remember. But now when they see the Jesus ruling and reigning in my life, they say, my God, you know they fought me harder as a Christian than they did as a sinner? And I got to thinking, my Lord, my life's been changed around. I'm, I, I'm not doing the bad, terrible trash that I used to do. least they ought to do is love me, and they, they come at me. But that don't make no difference. Praise God. I let the love of the Lord come out. I dedicated myself. You know what God told me and my wife? He said, because you and Kathy done what I told you to do, I'm going to get them all saved. And I want to let you know, he got them all except old Irene, and she's that close. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, how do you know she's that close? Because she called my house. She's going in the hospital there. In a couple of days, she said, would you mind, Kathy, you and Jesse pray for my leg? I said, I'll pray for your leg if you just let me pray for the rest of you. <laughs> I'm going to pray for a spirit. See? 
Dedication is essential in spiritual development for the believer. If any man, St. John 7, verse 17, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. What's the doctrine? The doctrine of Jesus Christ, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Listen to this point. Dedication brings out the agape love of the believer for the world to see. When you dedicate it to the Lord, you're going to be full of love. I hadn't seen a lot of Christians full of love. I've seen a lot of sloppy agape, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> a lot of kissing and hugging and stabbing in the back at the same time. Love you, sister. I wish you'd leave town, but we love you. <laughs> yeah. A dedicated person is a matured Christian in the Lord. Read the point with me again. Dedication brings out the agape love of the believer for the world to see. Turn with me to Psalms 42, verse 2. That's in the Old Testament, about the middle of the Bible. Psalms 42, verse 2. As you turn in that, let me say the point again. Dedication brings out the agape, the agape, the God kind of love of the believer for the world to see. Psalms 42, verse 2. Here, boy, this writer saying, My soul thirsted, oh, my mind, my will, and my emotion. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God, not a dead God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Are you praying that kind of prayer? Or you dedicate, you can't wait to get home to get in the presence of God? You can't wait, bless God, to have some time by yourself that you can talk to Jesus? Have you dedicated yourself that much? Bless the Lord. When you get a free time, you might be washing dishes or doing something. All the kids go to school, you throw the dish rag down. Lord, I just want to say I love you. you can't, do you wait to come to church? You, do you get to the church early? Just bless God. Let the doors be open so I can pray to you a little bit before everybody comes. Do you have that kind of dedication and commitment on a Monday night, on a Tuesday night, instead of a Sunday morning? Are you a Sunday morning Christian? Most Sunday morning Christians are going to hell. How do you know that? The Bible said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. You ought to hear my sermon, are you a Christian or a disciple? Did you get that tape, Vicki? You have that tape? Oh, you talk, it separates the Christians from the disciples quick. I find out that a lot of Christians are going to bust hell wide open. Sunday morning Christian, tired paying Christians. Because they're not disciples of Jesus. And God said, you know my disciples by the love they have one for another. And I know a lot of good people, are good people that have cut your guts out, let you bleed, and have the gall and audacity to say they're filled with the Spirit of God. And say malicious things about you and hurt you. That's not the agape love of God. Jesus said, you want to know who's going to heaven? If love's flowing out of him. If love's flowing out of her. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.